Hello, friends and viewers. In this episode, Mr. Smart's going to dive right into the importance of sales and marketing. Although those terms, sales and marketing, are so interrelated that they're often used together, they're not the same. Marketing is everything you do to reach and convince the prospective customers, while sales is everything you do to finalize and close a sale. On one hand, marketing prepares a customer for a sale through public relations, advertising, social media interaction, stuff like that. On the other hand, the sales process requires a closer, more personal interaction, kind of a one-on-one -on -one basis with customers. The prospect is usually driven to the sales personnel through marketing activity. In other words, marketing creates the environment in which sales are done. And sales are the lifeblood of any business. I mean, no sales equals no business. Marketing can convert a cold lead into a warm one in the sales cycle, and from there, the sales staff just picks up the lead and finalizes the sale. Intelligent fellows, your friendly guide, Mr. Smart, recommends you to watch this episode till the end, as there's going to be a summary of what we've learned and an intriguing question or two. In the earlier episodes, we've discussed poverty, paying yourself first, making money without working, financial literacy, the journey to becoming wealthy, income tax, and the loopholes in the tax system, as well as entrepreneur skills and business acumen. Now, links to these videos are, as always, available in the description. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. Smart, if you haven't already and you enjoy these videos. If you want more content like this, please, before you watch any further, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. Smart. And yes, don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. Now, let us come back to the topic at hand, sales and marketing. Having a good product or service is not enough. A business needs to create public awareness about the product or service, about how it can improve your work, your life, your play, its features, its quality, and most importantly, where they can purchase it. And this is where the marketing team comes into play. They're the ones that create the awareness and goodwill among the public. Later, the sales personnel gets to capitalize on the favorable environment that the marketing efforts created. That's a pretty potent relationship, wouldn't you agree? Now, having said that, I feel the need here to highlight that no matter what business you're going into, it definitely needs a healthy, balanced mix of marketing and sales activities. Any business who does not employ a healthy balance of both of these is going to fail in the long run. There's no doubt about it. Your sales efforts should focus on converting as many high probability prospects as possible. It's the marketing that should educate the market about your business and generate demand. If you're only investing in sales, well then you're only investing in the short-term viability of your business. That's no way to do business. So definitely, a healthy mix of marketing and sales is essential to the success of a business. One of the worst things for a business is when sales and marketing clash. Then they start pointing fingers at each other as to who's to blame for low sales or missed targets. Sales teams want to accuse marketing teams of using too much of the budget and not getting the intended result. Now they want more salespeople so they can make up for the missed goals. Now the marketing team accuses the sales team of being short-sighted and missing the big picture and skewing their long-term sales goals and wow, you can see where this would bring a company down, right? Well, that's exactly what was going on at IBM right before their management team merged their sales and marketing teams into a new division and called it Channel Enablement. It yielded them positive results like shorter sales cycles and lower cost per sale. It's definitely worth looking into. Mr. Smart has witnessed firsthand that many, if not most small businesses, don't have a marketing department at all. Or maybe a small sales team is doing the marketing job as well. Usually, they just equate the two and miss real opportunities to use marketing as market positioning. Usually, as a business grows, a few more people get hired, they start to measure the market, identify market segments, then they start realizing the best channels to reach them. They start to promote more, create a market strategy. At this point, the marketing team is seen as an adjunct to the sales department. The relationship is generally positive. The trouble usually comes after the company's reached a certain level of growth. Then business sponsors and executives start to recognize that marketing is much more than the four P's, which are product, price, place, and promotion. That's when they hire marketers who are experts in market segmentation, targeting, and positioning. 
That's when the marketing department gets to rub shoulders with the sales department and gets to compete for more budget and influence. This is when branding and strategic planning becomes a focus. It's important at these levels to keep the relationship balanced and productive. Furthermore, Mr. Smart suggests to any of you who are thinking of starting a business or going into sales and marketing, please hold yourself to a higher standard of ethics than most. A lot of people in the general public see salesmen and marketers as crooks and scammers, and you don't have to dig too deep to understand why. You know, remember that non-stick pan you bought for an advertised $9.99 that actually turned out to be more like $19.99 once you added in the hidden shipping and handling charge, only to find out once it arrived, it's not exactly as non-stick as advertised. Or how about that last cell phone you upgraded to for free? They love to use, or should I say misuse that word, free, a lot. Sure, it's free at the moment, until you receive your bill and notice the $50 activation fee you didn't know about, or the nice little $5 a month charge for the privilege of the upgrade. Ever been to a new or used car lot? Anyway, the point is, be professional. Don't abuse your position. Be, as they say, above board. You know, keep prices clear with no hidden charges. You don't need to use deceptive practices to trick people into buying from you. In fact, treat your customers well. Respect their privacy and do everything within your power to safeguard any and all of their information. You see, treat them well and you'll stand out in their mind next time they're in the market for what you're selling. I really don't understand why so many people underestimate the importance of selling and marketing skills. They'll certainly give you a greater financial advantage in the long run, even over a high paying job. In fact, I'll bet if you could see the benefits all laid out in front of you, you'd be willing to work for free to learn them. They're certainly not just for business use. They help us in our daily lives. For example, maybe you own a business. You sell a widget. You employ a sales and marketing team to sell that widget. Now, you need someone skilled to run the machine that makes your widget. Okay, man comes in, gives you his resume. He sits down, you start asking him questions about his qualifications. Doesn't he now start to employ his own marketing team? Isn't he there to sell you on his skill sets to run your machine? Of course he is. Ever read a book? How about the novelist, the writer? Didn't he try and sell you on his ideas, his thoughts? Absolutely. These tactics are employed all throughout our daily lives. Employed professionals, businessmen, entrepreneurs, they all need a good reputation and effective networking for a really bright career. And in short, it comes down to, if you want financial success, you better start learning some sales and marketing skills. You don't even have to quit your day job to learn them. Maybe you join a network marketing company in the evenings. Using a network marketing company would give you the opportunity to sell someone else's product without a personal investment. Or you may need to buy a sample product or something. Then you could earn commission on the sale. Here's where Mr. Smart wants to share a few words of caution with his friends and viewers. You need to be careful in your selection of a network marketing company. Do your homework and research it first. A company that offers higher compensation for recruiting than they do the actual product is suspicious. This could be an illegal pyramid scheme. Stay far away from them. And because Mr. Smart never sleeps, he's already making separate videos for you on what network marketing is and what the signs of an inverted pyramid scheme are. Yep, you guessed it. The links will be available in the description. In 1991, Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the all-time number one book of personal finance, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, wrote his first book. His publisher wanted to title the book, The Economics of Education. Ugh, how exciting does that sound? But being a seasoned marketer with acute business acumen, he selected the more provocative, intriguing title of, If You Want to Be Rich, Don't Go to School. Robert's strategy proved right. Despite the title of the book, he is quite pro-education. He's especially a staunch supporter of educating yourself throughout life. He doesn't endorse a school system that teaches how to be an employee though, but rather one who teaches how to be an employer or an entrepreneur. Robert never claims to be a best writing author, but he is in fact a best selling one. We here at Mr. Smart are big fans of Robert and his philosophies on becoming wealthy. We've made a complete series of animated videos about the life, struggle and achievements of Robert Kiyosaki. And besides that, we've also made videos based on Robert's best-selling personal finance book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, as well. Links to these videos are in the description for you. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. Smart, 
and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. Dear viewers, now let us explore a few questions. How can a business integrate the marketing and sales activities? Have you personally witnessed the friction between marketing and sales departments? Have you ever worked with a network marketing company? What do you know about illegal pyramid schemes? Your fellow viewers and Mr. Smart would love to hear your opinion and experiences in the comments section below. Now, let us summarize what we've learned in this video. 1. Marketing is everything you do to reach and convince the prospective customers, while sales is everything you do to finalize and close a sale. Marketing creates the environment in which sales are done. 2. A business is in dire need to make its prospective customer understand how its product or service can make their lives easier or more enriching. 3. A business also needs a healthy and balanced mix of marketing and sales activities. 4. The worst thing for a business is when marketing and sales activities are not aligned effectively. In this case, the two departments will blame each other for lower sales and missed targets. 5. In many small businesses, there is no separate marketing department. A small sales team is doing the marketing job as well as sales, or they may even equate the marketing function with selling. 6. Mr. Smart suggests a high standard of ethics in marketing and sales professions. 7. We should be willing to work for free to learn sales and marketing skills because these skills will give you the greatest financial advantage over a longer period of time, even better than a high-paying job. 8. We can keep our day job and learn these skills while working for network marketing companies at night. 9. You need to be careful in your selection of network marketing companies. You may come across an illegal pyramid scheme as well. 10. Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the all-time number one book of personal finance, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, never claims to be the best writing author, but he is, in fact, a best-selling author. Dear viewers, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to watch more videos like this in the future. Also, hit the bell button for notifications. It's totally free.